Oh, hi. How are you? Is that a sign? I don't know, man. It's like Ace of Ace. I saw the sign of the most influential dude you never knew. You didn't know that, did you? But who is the most influential you never knew? The most I think influential? It's, uh, this guy named Marcus. Marcus. Aurelius. Aurelius. He had, a, he had like four names. It's like, yeah. Yeah, let's not even bring that up. What? Yeah, so we're here to talk about... Marcus Aurelius. Who Marcus was Aurelius. He was a Roman Empire, but he was also he, a father. He, he was a Roman Empire? <laughs> Maybe not. He was an he, emperor for like 19 years. the empire. He embodied it. That's, that's the only way he could get there. He embodied his... That's what we're here to talk about. He embodied his teaching. Mm-hmm. Which yeah, were, which stoicism, were, as, as, in stoicism and we wanted to talk about him because of his influences yeah. really on probably a lot of things that you embark on on every day oh you, you need like a i don't know something to prop it up like we can have like a device i mean it goes and it like flies away it's called a printer. We can print it. So make a copy. In the in the interest of getting to the point, what you know, I kind of want to cut you off. You want to, want to cut? Me. Say that again. <laughs> in the interest of getting to the point. Yum 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 yum. Choo choo. Here on boom. Hey man, I like tacos. Hey, let's go to work. Chop chop. Uh, don't you need to be ready? I, we'll talk about that. We, I think the heat is making us delirious. And we're not even working outside. It's not like 100 degrees. I know. It's, like, it's crazy. But, well, because we turned off a fan. And you can't kick the table. You got you just got, you got a foot rest. Housekeeping. Marcus Aurelius. Yeah, Roman dude. Yeah, he was an emperor. Roman dude. Yeah, that's right. And uh, born in here. It kind of sounds like you're mocking me. If you want no, to read okay. it, I'll let you go ahead. By all means. Oh wait, what do you want to read? Well, so I was just gonna say, hey, you know, who is this dude? Right? Not this dude or that dude. This dude. Yeah, that, bring him up. Uh, yeah, I'll bring him up. Bring up that dude. This dude, right here. I will. All right. So. Right there. Don't where my hand's supposed to be. Yeah, I'm um, just keep hit, talking about hit him. Cut. I, 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 let's let right me here. worry about it. He's a dude that's right here. No, he's not. He's not there yet, is he? How come you? You don't have it? to worry about it. Just get start because I'm actually working on it. You just got to hit cut, and then he, he'll be on TV. Watch. It's hit a, cut. Please just. Oh well, I'll let you figure it out. Oh, so he's the dude that'll show up on your screen in a minute. But we kind of wanted to talk about it because he had virtues that he wanted to kind of live upon every day. And he was an emperor, and he had to go to battle and fight these other countries. I don't know why. We're not even going to get into the whys of that. But we're going to talk about why he was so influential and why Stoic readings are so influential in your daily Mm -hmm. sort of life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess is what I'm trying to say and you you somehow like scooted over I feel like you're out of no I, I'm now. just like inclined where do you want to begin oh we can talk about real quick I have a little kit yeah it's cool um it's kind of weird remember you remember why this is weird because it's uh Marcus Aurelius's um, he's he, got a beekeeper produced... chasing a robot looking truck and, and this truck is unique because it doesn't have wheels it has like these spiky things and I don't know why the, the beekeeper is after the truck yeah it's it's a little crazy it's a little funky donkey for a reason but we've been keeping it insane in our membrane yeah about almost a year ago I talked about it like I was going to do it and I just forgot about it Hello, it's kind of crazy, CEO. Ooh, inbound drink. <laughs> that looks so cool. What's 
Do you want? No, I don't know. I don't like blue raspberry. Well, I guess you don't have to drink it. All right. Well, stoicism. Hold on. On the back, though, it has a robot attack kitty thing, and I'm not sure why. I don't see a cat in here. I don't even know. Is there a cat that's that small that'll fit? So in I'm here? reading the script right now, and we're off. We're trying different camera formats. That's also what we're trying to do is just get yeah. better. And so if you're seeing us from a different view, it's not new, but it is. Where do you want to begin? We're gonna get like a different camera or anything. Uh, the five good emperors, which uh, one of them happened to be Marcus Aurelius. He, he ruled from 161 to 180 A.D. Yep. He was born in April 26th. 121 uh, A.D. So, in Rome, <laughs> he was in Rome. He was in Rome. When in Rome. When in Rome, be adopted by an emperor, because that's what happened to him. And uh, he, You know, I was in Rome once, and I ate McDonald's outside, uh, outside. the uh, Vatican. And then I took a picture of it. I had the biggest 20-piece nugget. I mean, I, oh, I had the biggest nugget meal they had. And when I was in Italy, I had a bunch of Italian food. And it was bad, awesome, to the bone. But I forgot how long I'd been there. And, and then and I saw McDonald's, and I was like, man, that kind of sounds good right now. It's hot. It's Rome. Uh, it's hilarious. I can see the Vatican right next to it. That's when you met Marcus Aurelius. I well, kinda, yeah. It was a long time ago when McDonald's was first getting started. But Back I the... took a picture of my food, right? And I wrote on the picture, "When in Rome," and you know, why not? When in Rome, eat and McDonald's. it went popular on Twitter. <laughs> no, it didn't do nothing. I think I lost the picture. But anyway, look. This dude shaped a lot. He did a bunch of stuff. He had writings. We'll get into that. And I should probably play some music. You should play some music. We'll, we'll set the mood. Okay, and then we're going to do this model kit at the same time. Um, so he had writings that he did. You know, a lot of reflecting on things that he was having problems with. Like being an emperor. I mean, I can't even imagine. Like, the reason why... I, I can't imagine it is because based on his philosophical views it was not a parallel pri offering i think to live a day-to-day -day yeah. life so where do you want to begin i mean i was this is the comedic relief right now Okay, in addition to philosophical pursuits, Marcus Aurelius was an avid practitioner of Stoicism. He believed in the importance of living virtue and showing compassion to others, finding tranquility through self-mastery. His writings often reveal his personal struggles to uh, align his actions with his philosophical principles, which is, you know, your actions speak louder than your words. Your... Your words don't speak in my book. Yeah, that's... So they don't... What I'm saying is, you know... Yeah. That's part of uh, Stoicism, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. What matters? You want to expand on, like, what Stoicism is? If you... Stoicism is basically... In your eyes, I think. Well, yeah, so I'm not going to read you the definition. It's just about kind of being... Knowing that there's things you can't change. And being okay with that. Knowing that you need to have probably a balance, we'll call it, in the universe. Yeah. That you put others before yourself. You're trying to do good things basically every day. And it's not even about trying to be better than somebody else. It's just trying to make sure that as you're progressing through through life, you're getting better at it. You're understanding that your actions have accountability. Right. Never thought about it. That way. I never thought about existentialism. But this is where Marcus comes into play. I, I mean, I'm just going to say 
Stoicism. Stoicism is a philosophical school that originated in ancient Greece and later developed in Rome. When? Does it, it say? Per- <laughs> I'm getting to that. Okay. Oh, I just was kind of I curious guess, if it gives a date. I mean, it might, but it doesn't see a date. I... I can look it up. That's okay. Know. Yeah. But here, here's the basic, like, because I, I really only looked at the definition. I think it was like 300 BC or something. It's when Stoicism was yeah, kind of yeah, like, makes started sense. to become like a thing. And it, it originates somewhere. We won't get into that just yet. But Yeah, but virtue is the highest good. Is like Stoics believe that the ultimate goal in life is to mm-hmm. cultivate virtue. Mm-hmm. Virtue, which... Uh, Includes wisdom, courage, justice, and temperament, temperance, uh, and that leads to eudaimonia. What is it called? Wedaimonia. Can't really. So, un- so we we did do a lot of proofreading on this. Sorry, We're, I want to say this real quick. There's a bunch of words in here that ain't common vernacular. Let's just say that. And we, how many times did we look this word up I, and how to pronounce I it? I looked this up like, like 10 times, dude. Yeah. Because we would read it and reread it and reread it. And we're like, just like, oh my gosh, we're never going to get through this. And don't worry, I'm going to build the frog. Just get off my back, punky Brewster. Don't be all calling me up in the middle of the night and going, hey, you know, I built it way before you did. And. I was like a kid, but now you can, you're like an adult and you can't even build it. And I'm just like, is this like your personal? Me and Punky Brewster have a conversation every night about building the frog. This is your personal <laughs> parasocial conflicts with this guy. It's a girl. It's a girl. Yeah, Punky Brewster is a girl. It's and a the, show. The, the episode it was like a show. Or something. Yeah, it was an episode called "Girls Will Be Boys." Instead of "Boys Will Be Boys," you know. Yeah, it was showing because she. Well, I'll say this: this was her conflict. Like, you know, Marcus had conflicts about going to war. Um, it was it was a conflict because, you know, the boys didn't want her to race her RC car with them, and then she kicked her butt or something. I guess I don't remember. It was a long time ago when I saw it. My point is, Punky Brewster, get off my back. She, I don't think she really knows who I am. I was saying that just to be silly. Number two is a uh, dichotomy. Dichotomy. Do you know what that means? Dichotomy. Yeah, dichotomy of control. Yeah, Stokes distinguish between things that are within their control and you know, um, like such as internal thoughts and. Stoics distinguish between things that are within their control, internal, such as their thoughts and attitudes, and things that are beyond their control, external, such as events and other people's actions. So they focus only on what they can control and accept. What? Uh, they focus on what they can control and accept, what they cannot. Okay. Well, that's accept what they cannot. There was no except, there. So. Yeah. No, I think. I think you're kind of seeing the point, right? It's that stoicism is a is a is a philosophical way of doing life. That is honestly, it's not. It's, it's pretty more, easy. It's emotionally regulating yourself more than really contemplating those emotions. Yeah. So it will actually talks about emotions and apathy right there. Oh. Stoicism aims to achieve emotional tranquility by developing rational control over emotions. Stoics do not suppress emotions, but seek to cultivate a sense of inner peace and contentment. Inner peace and and um, what did it say? And what? Contentment. And contentment. That I think is a hard thing for for people. I think that's probably the the hardest. It's kind of out there. I've never never been able to do that. Well. It's, it's knowing that, all right, so when he was young, we would say, if somebody was being like a bully or something, 
like are rude at school or whatever, you know, it upsets you, right? And if somebody's doing that, we used to tell our kids, and we, we still do. It's not like we change our minds. Just because you got older. We would tell them and be like, hey, you know, they, that's their problem if they don't like you. And it, that it's it may not seem like it's relatable, but it, it really is. Because it's achieving emotional tranquility by developing those rational emotions. You know, and then not, you know, not trying to suppress it necessarily, but knowing how to control the emotions like anger or, you know, you're mad because somebody's doing something and they're annoying you. Or... Well, yeah, because you can find, like you said, rational, that's not, not looking at it as just like your mind going crazy, just you. Well, and so knowing that, all right, so like take, let's take that, that bully for an example. <laughs> so the, to me, in my mind, the bully has an issue of why they're probably picking on you. I'm not saying that I'm not like downplaying that bullying's bad, you know, not really bad. I, what I'm saying is, is if somebody's bullying you and you really let it get to you, <clears throat> then, you know, there's two problems there. Obviously, you know, the bully bullying you and then obviously how you're controlling your feelings. I think that's where trying to figure out how to let go and why would you do that while I'm making noises you're like that that news reporter just now what what dude uh here's the thing here's how I take it um the thing you said about like I, I don't really know what you said but how I take it I know part of what you said but how I take it is um Y'all have teenagers? If you don't, then this is how you act. Anyways, how I take it is um, a problem with accepting how that person's talking to you. Like it says with stoicism, I'm trying to look related. Yeah. A, a big part of, you know, taking things like that is accepting it. Not accepting what they're saying is truth, but that well, they... And yeah and again i'm not saying um, that oh you should just go oh that person shouldn't be a bully to me and yeah you know i'm not gonna like not think about it and not internalize it i'm saying if you can do that you're gonna be way off better in the world it's like i'm gonna give you an easy one video games you're online somebody says something you don't like to you and then you try to ruin your whole evening about it well, that person that says something that you don't like who cares like why, why do you literally care the fact that you care empowers them to keep doing that crap that you don't like the fact that you care so much about it yeah. fuels that for them and and it and makes them feel better about themselves for a little nanosecond right i mean it's light i it mean is. and it sucks because i'm telling you it ain't easy i was bullied in school a lot and it was mainly because we were poor. I, I think. I, I don't know exactly. I didn't go have dinner with them later. Uh, but I just thought to myself, later in life, those people are pathetic. They're losers. I don't care if they have millions of dollars now. You know, whoever did that to me. I, I, I don't care. What I'm saying is, is... They're still a loser. There are loser millionaires out there all day long. Doesn't mean doesn't mean you're cool. They just figured out a way to make a coin. Yeah. So, but what I was gonna try to say was like, so. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't it, mean it to is go too long. But it, but it's it's it, 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 it is accepting that. And, and it's, it's also and it's when like you said, whenever you let them do that, it kind of they're trying to pinpoint your insecurities and take you down that way because they see your insecurities as a way to feel better about themselves like you said right so you need to allow your you need to accept first of all what you are and sometimes that's just sinking into your insecurities and just uh, not necessarily being insecure at least how i see it this is just me being insecure is like not accepting uh being insecure not you know because you're insecure because those people are saying things right yeah you i mean where, you get where i'm kind of going right yeah so you have to um be comfortable with yourself 
at the same time. Yeah. And just just accepting it like literally brings you on the path to being secure, you know? Yeah. I, I, I yeah, I can see that. Because that's what people kind of always say. You have to accept you have a problem. In this case, it's not your problem. That's why it's so, like, it should be kind of... Right. So, Stoics, what else do they practice? Well, <sighs> they're going to sound like hippies. And that's what's so funny. I'm telling you. I was going to say there are so many things this is in kind life. Of what we were talking about, acceptance of nature. Stoics view the world as rational and ordered system governed by divine reason. And in parentheses it says logos. I don't really know. We, we can they look that accept up. the natural course of events and embrace adversity with equanimity. Yeah, they're basically just saying we know that, like I said in the last live stream, one thing you can't mess with is Mother Nature and Father Time. Yeah. So, they, they knew that. Yeah, uh, so duty and social responsibility. Stoics believe in fulfilling one's duties and responsibilities to society, family, and community. They consider themselves citizens of the world and practice treating others with compassion and fairness. So they view mm. as it's always Good. about being equal to the other person. And uh, yeah. finding different ways to do that, essentially. Um... Man, look, it's got little headlights now. That's so adorable. It's the most adorable little truck ever. All right, so what's the next thing? Do you today? build the beekeeper ever? Uh, I don't have a. It doesn't have a cat either. I don't know where Dang. that's coming from. So we we'll have to figure it out. So I got the little truck. Now think about this. That that was in that little kit, and there's more to build. No, I I want the cat. That's a fine one. All right, so what else did they do? What else did Stoics do? Me. <laughs> a Stoicism has a significant impact on various aspects of human thought, including Western philosophy. It's kind of a... I don't know. Well, I did mentioned we say that? it. Yeah, you mentioned it. I mentioned it. it. Yeah. I mean, okay, so... Ethics, psychology, and liter literature, it continues to be relevant today uh, as a source of practical wisdom, guidance, and for living in a meet meaningful worship virtuous life yeah it's basically they were just trying to be the best human they could be i they they found the way and this was really before like any prominent is, religion yeah this is like summarizing basically what they saw as good what they saw as staying on track orderly yeah. not disorder so before we get into marcus who are some famous stoics or who are famous people throughout history? You have that list. That uh, I do. That. So we got a little list here. Maybe yeah. you can bring that up on screen. You want to do that? I, nah, we'll just talk about them. We'll just we'll name them. So all right. So this little kit. Look, the box was weird. Let's just admit it. If in case you forgot, they. They probably clicked out of the video, like, you know, after 30 seconds. Well, However, if you stayed and you were sitting here going... It's over-advertising. I mean... It's a style of, of advertising we're right. not used to. The, it, it is... That is hilarious. Well, I just still don't know what the hell is up with the beekeeper. And then why is, like well, I said, this like dude in the back... Big yellow so, bee. On like, he's... Look, I don't, it has some symbolic nature to and it. And then there's a, a cat right. inside a robot. And I know it's like yeah. fuzzy or whatever. It's not like zooming in good. Anyway, whatever. It's uh, weird. So, so now I, I have was to just build gonna bring up. over. So famous stoic people. Seneca the Younger, epic. Seneca the Younger. Epic Epictetus. So well, let's just say who that who was who was Seneca. Uh, a Seneca? Roman was it Seneca? A Roman philosopher, statesman, and playwright who was deeply influenced by Stoicism. He wrote many philosophical philosophical works including letters to his friend uh lucius yeah lucius which explore stoic principles and ethics um then there's epictetus i don't know how to say his name there's a lot of people yeah, in here uh, <laughs> was a stoic philosopher born as a slave in hero polis Fiagra, now turkey uh his teachings were recorded by his student 
Arian emphasized the importance of uh, self-discipline, self-control, and the acceptance of external events, which is a big part of Stoicism. That's you can see the influence there. Yeah. Then there's Cato the Younger. Cato was a Roman senator and a Sto Stoic uh, philosopher known for his unwavering commitment to principles and his opposition to corruption and tyranny. He became a symbol of Stoic virtue in the Roman society. Then, oh gosh, there's at least nine total. There's one, you know, Emmanuel Kant, Thomas Jefferson, yeah, Nelson Mandela. Which, uh... You ever heard of the Mandela effect? Yeah. They, A lot of people thought he was dead. In the 80s and 90s or whatever. No, he wasn't. Did right. you know Nelson Mandela was a fan of rugby? He invented it in this. Best sport ever. Prove me wrong. Anyway. Um, you know, rugby, I feel like, has a stoic sort of philosophy. Oh. Um, Did you know that? Depends on how you look at it. No. It's the core values. Really? Are in direct alignment with being a stoic. Tell me. Like, for instance, on the field. You know, let's, let's use L football or soccer, as you call it, in Texas. Uh, would it be La Football? La Football? I don't know. Um, my son is practicing being a comedian. Let us know how he's doing. Um, he, he being a prop comic. He's like falling over. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out a comedic, like, kind of slapstick way to just, like, Oh, yeah. I over. felt like I had a bug on my like, neck. Fun, fumble over, because I'm like, hey, I probably like. Yeah, so so the big difference, like in soccer, right? Um, you'll see. Well, the the one of the terms that we 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 like to use is soccer is a gentleman's sport played by hooligans, yeah. and rugby is a hooligan sport played by gentlemen. The reason for that, the big biggest example is how we treat the referee or the line judges. It ain't. It ain't the same, I can assure you. If we say a cuss word, we do anything like ill proper, we'll call it. See ya. You're done. I've seen lifetime bands. Like you, you're just you, No. No, I wasn't. Goober. This ain't backwards day, it ain't Monday. Do you have a case of the moon days? Ooh, nugget. Somebody's gonna reflect back on this and go, Did you know he said moon days? But yeah, some nerd. Even though we have like no cult following. I know we have our we're we're our own cult followers. Uh, so we're a community at heart. Yeah. So anyway, uh, moving on. So there was some very notable. It's called st moving on stoicism. It, we there there was just some very uh, notable people that practiced it. Yeah. Now, in Christianity, there was Saint Augustine. Who yeah. who was the other dude? Do you remember? Uh, just a dude. Just a dude. The Beatles, just a band. Fat Boy Slim, so, just a band. So, Emperor Nero, Emperor Marcus Aurelius. Now, I was trying to figure out... only influenced by Stoicism, but actively practice it. His Meditations is a collection of... We're going to get into that. Why? What, what, personal what reflections that, that demonstrate his commitment to the... Okay, so you, you get the idea. There were some big people. I think, um, where was that at? I wanted to find out. Uh, da, 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 da. No, you had, I thought you had a, uh, I thought you pulled up something regarding. Uh, oh, yeah. What is stoicism? Uh, we kind of went into that, right? Something. Oh, I can pull it up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we kind of went into like what it is already, right? Like the the the, the kind of their teachings. So I want to kind of let's maybe go into meditation. What do you think? Uh, Meditations. It's not just meditating. This was Meditations was a series of personal right writings by the Roman emperor Marcus Aurelius. You can go on. 
Yeah, so I I don't think what were you gonna say? I'll be right back. Okay. I'll just like Yeah. Uh and because I still have some parts to do here in a second. So uh I'm gonna cut back to that other scene there. Alright. So you can see my little dude that we're building. The weird car from Bandai. So meditations. It was a serious, you know, so Marcus, he had a a bunch of personal writings. It is considered to be one of the greatest writings about Stoic philosophy. Um, it provides a ton of insight to his thoughts and reflections, moral philosophy, uh, meditations. Uh, the book Meditations were written in Greek. And I'm pretty sure he didn't intend for anybody to, to publish it. It was his, these are his personal writings. This is, so it's like, you know, sometimes you capture somebody, I guess, uh, what am I trying to say? You, you capture somebody, sorry, I, my stool, what do you need stools? In case you're a stool sponsor, man, that would, that would be the first one I'd take right now. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure he didn't intend for these to be ever published. And that, that to me is is pretty profound because you, you're sitting there going your day-to-day -day life. You're writing down, I'm in this war today and man, this sucks. I'm, I don't know what to do about it. And then the next thing you know, it's being published, not the next thing, but you get the idea. So um, they were definitely pr private reflections. So think about your most private reflections being published later on in life. Because you lived your life to a T of this virtue and wisdom. So, you know, it was divided in sort of, they kind of divided it up into 12 chapters. I really don't know who, but it, that's just kind of how it came out. Um, they all have various passages that explore their different philosophical themes. Some are reoccurring topics uh, in the collection, like nature and universe, importance of self-discipline, uh, the transience of life, virtues of courage, justice, wisdom, temperance. You know, they they all sort of kept churning those same sort of themes, we'll call them. Um, you know, he reflects on all the challenges and hardships. I'm actually going to kind of talk a little bit about that. You know, uh, providing himself with a moral and ethical sort of guidance, I guess. He stresses of the importance of living, in, you know, in nature and he embraced the, the concept of stoic uh sort of rational governance of the of the universe um you know a few notable quotes now this is where i think i personally sort of connected with going into those teachings it sitting there thinking about like your day-to-day -day life and you know how sometimes you'll you know whatever social media platform you might be on sometimes you see like a little framed picture and it has like a famous quote i'm telling you these quotes they're the real mccoy it ain't like oprah winfrey just regurgitating something out of a book that she may or may not have read and i'm not picking on her she's done a lot of cool things for people i'm just saying that sometimes famous people are used in images and sometimes they don't even say that stuff they're just being used in an image it's to try to i don't know sell you something maybe i don't know notable quotes so something he wrote in his book was you have power over your mind not outside events realize this and you will find strength this is beautiful um the best revenge is to not be like your enemy. Think about it. Your enemy may, well, let's use the bully example. Your, your bully or your enemy is probably going through something, who knows, and they're taking it out on you. But don't be like them. Don't retaliate. Have compassion, maybe. Try it. I don't know. It could be a game changer for some people. Waste no more time arguing about what a good man is should be be one man it, it, i'm telling you it's like when this was written you would have thought that this would have been on facebook already i promise you a lot of these have and they just 
like I said, most of the time you see a random picture with a quote that looks similar to this. Um, very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself and in your way of thinking. You know, again, these are just, I don't want to dumb it down into musings. The St. Peggy Hill here writing for the, the Arlen newspaper. It's like literally, you know, a Roman emperor going through his life and trying to navigate it. Um, you know, the book Meditation by Marcus Aurelius is, remains highly regarded for its wisdoms, practical advice, profound insights. It provides, you know, kind of into a mind of one's most notable philosopher emperors. Um, and it's, it's widely studied just on a regular basis. A lot of times they're, it's widely studied and it's usually maybe like, I don't want to say a watered down version, but there's so many later modern philosophical writings, even the Bible, for instance. Again, a lot of those people were not just likely, some of them definitely were a follower of, uh, of the Stoic writings. Um, so, there was, uh, so philosophical, philo we'll just call it philosophy of Stoicism and the influence. So, influence in Western philosophy, we kind of talked a little bit about this. So, here are some notable uh, situations. Um, you know, it's considered, or the Stoic sort of writings in Marcus himself, uh, played a significant role in shaping Western philosophy. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of them that followed it. We kind of talked a little bit about some very profound figures uh, in history. Um, so ethics and virtue ethics, uh, you know, is kind of a big influence. Uh, the Stoicism's uh, focus, or Stoicism's, you know, I've heard both. So... If it's said one way or the other, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's the focus and virtue on ethics. Uh, it's living in accordance with virtues is a path of, you know, just being flourishing and well-being. Had a profound impact on ethical thinking. Um, it's influenced subsequent ethical theories and provided a framework for understanding the nature of good character and moral actions. Um, you know, you find that a lot, like I said, in you know, not just the Bible, but there are obviously a lot of, um, I guess you want to call them religious writings or religious teachings that you're going to see these foundations just are just there. Uh, early Christian thinkers like St. Augustine and St. Ambrose were influenced heavily and, and it was an integral part of Christian thought. Um, all right psychological resilience and mental well-being it's kind of what we've been talking about here on the channel quite a bit and that's really sort of the key element of why we sort of talked about this was how it can maybe possibly help you from a mental capacity um or just the stoic sort of teachings but, you know saying no oh, hey there's saying some things i can and can't do or just knowing that i can control my emotions but i can't control others uh, so being psychological, uh, psychologically resilient and having a mental well-being from those principles, it's like the idea of acceptance and what is beyond your control, you know, focusing what you can control, having integrated, uh, into modern, it's, or it's, excuse me, they have been integrated into modern psychological and therapeutic approaches, cognitive behavior therapies. It draws from stoic ideas. Uh, help individuals develop uh, these these writings have definitely helped individuals develop develop that resiliency and changes big time happen in people's lives you know I feel like I'm one of them just not being like wound up like a drum you know I had conviction about things because I, those are things you wanted to do or believe in but then you know you, you worry about those outside influences um so, it influence on political thought. 
you know, Stoic political philosophy emphasizes the idea of universal human community, uh, importance of governing with wisdom and virtue. This influenced later political thinkers such as John Locke and Thomas Jefferson. Oh, we got a convergence right here at one time. Oops. Y'all, y'all were just passing by almost at the same time. It looked funny. Um, uh, let's see here. Yeah, so, it, you know, influence, like I said, John Locke, Thomas Jefferson, uh, they incorporated those stoic principles into their notions and natural law and human rights. Uh, influence on literature uh, left its mark, you know, particularly in Roman literature. Um you know, Seneca's philosophical works and uh, obviously Marcus's meditations. Um, Stoic practices um, such as negative uh, visualization or contemplating the loss of one's values, self-reflection have been incorporated into mindfulness and personal development practices. So you'll see that, you know, just you're just seeing these influences of these writings all these philosophies intertwined into everyday life, and you don't even know it. Again, that's why maybe we, probably not even the most influential dude, probably the most influential thought theory or philosophical thought processes could be this. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, influence on Stoic and community. In recent years, actually, uh, the Stoic community has experienced kind of, sort of a resurgence. I, I, I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, individuals seeking guidance from Stoic principles to navigate challenges of the modern world. That's why we're here, because it talked about earlier when you were gone, you know, that sort of that mindfulness and then that, that psychological resilience. Yeah. And the, and being Stoic, uh, <laughs> or being a Stoic, I guess, is really how you would say it, or the or follower of Stoicism, I think can have a profound impact on one's mental health um and of course it has been written influence and you know like i said in those guidance in the communities we're going to see i think we can hope to see a growth in that um, because it, it the reason for that is it it, ha, it doesn't really matter where your upbringing is these are these are general just human quality traits we're not even talking about religion or your background or where you grew up nothing like that this is just something that you can general general guidance there you go um so it has an enduring legacy resilience and the pursuit of meaningful life and it just resonates it resonated with me a lot um let's see here it resonates with people across the fourth dimension the fourth dimension time it is definitely gone far and far and far um so there, there are some resources as you know that so there are some online resources there's a bunch of blogs dedicated to this topic it's a, a podcast it we're has, talking about it it's still what, what we're saying it's still accessible today it's still relevant today and you know these are just some places you can find yeah it. so uh evidently there's some reddit groups too we're right. not we're not promoting there's, anyone okay, so you, of, you're, you have to go do your own research right. on that part uh for example the books i'm sure is a big one because you know you have meditations by marcus and then discourses by Ep Ep epicticus whatever i'm sorry I yeah it, it's again we're sorry we we looked at and anyway, then uh letters to lucius by seneca you know some of these we went over because uh it, some of these were found because they were just kind of out there weren't exactly publishes right yeah, publish. um, I kind of went into that you know that his book nope I, he there's he probably never thought that it was going to anybody was going to ever find some it some others out there there's Ryan Holiday Massimo Pigalucci oh, I don't know Pigalucci yeah Massimo Pigalucci sounds Italian Donald, Donald Robertson <laughs> So there's some people here I really don't know who the heck they're talking about. But anyway. William D. Irvine, we're listing some so you can go out there and have something to reference. Start with meditations. Yeah, meditation is pretty good. I mean, uh, it's the good one. Obviously, online resources, blogs, online forums, so, whatever you can find. There is something else significant 
um, after we kind of get through this. Is there anything else here? All right, so let's go into, let's pull up. Well, there'll be some overlap here, but pull up the research that I did a little while ago on the why was it such a big conflict or an issue for him. Okay. Uh, do you want me to read this part or do you want to get it? You read it. Okay, so I'm going to pull it up over here. All right. So, All right. Marcus, he was conflicted as an emperor. In case you hadn't figured it out, it was because of his beliefs. So, you know, his duties as an emperor, it, it had, you know, immense responsibility. I'm sure you can probably fathom. You know, he had political affairs, military campaigns, economic matters, burdens of leaderships, decision-making things he had to do probably 24-7. So he had to kind of try to figure out how that would play in his day-to-day -day life. Ergo meditations. Why it happened. His personal values, Marcus was dedicated uh, to being a stoic philosopher, emphasizing self-control, virtue, and rational dealing with life challenges. However, they left lofty principles in the political arena. Uh, he had to make tough choices to deal with the complex human emotions. And it wasn't easy. So kind of think about that for a second. So if you had a lofty goal because you're stoic and you want the absolute, the most absolute best for, for all your people, you know the human element is at play. You know that his political senate are probably a bunch of goobers. Most people in political nature, by nature, are panders. They pander to your quote unquote whatever you think you want or what they tell you you want. Well, he knew all this. And he, you know, he knew it because his teachings taught him that and he was living. That's why he was considered one of the, the one of the five great emperors and the last one, the last great emperor. Um he had to deal with external threats. You know, that's kind of crazy. You know, he had Wars with Germanic tribes, the uh, Parthian Empire to the east, he was at war with. He had conflicts all the time that put pressure uh, on his arms. And he knew that loss of life was going to happen. And that's something that you're trying to deal with and, and then also to justify at the same time. Um, succession concerns. Marcus was worried about finding a suitable, uh, excuse me, succession. Did I say su success? Uh, anyway, he was look. He he knew he had to find somebody to follow in his yeah. footsteps. Uh, his adopted son. Um, he adopted Lucius Verus versus and later named his son. I uh, guess is Com it Commodus? Commodus as co-emperor Commodus. How, however. Um, he proved to be an effective ruler. Yeah, he's. I guess he sucked. And sorry, Marcus was no, conflicted I, 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 about his choice. Yeah. So. Yeah, that would suck. Uh, in internal dis dissent, 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 whatever. Political intrigues, like any ruler, Marcus faced internal dissent. People didn't like him. Various factions within the empire were always having conflicts with him. Uh, added to the stress and the, you know, of course, to these turmoil. Despite these challenges. So, he had to deal with all of that, and he still would write every day to try yeah, to make that's himself where be he, better. That's where meditations came from. That this is was exactly where meditations came from. Thank you. And unfortunately, after his death, that's when the poo poo hit the fan. And then the poo poo scattered, not only on the fan, but all over the ceiling, all over the room, and like show show the 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 section here. I want to try to finish this. Okay. Go into a little bit about this, but cut to the show me show the little desk cam. Okay. Trucks. I know it's adorable, man. This is just an adorable little kit, even though it's got goofy advertising. Yeah. So after the death 
uh, the Roman Empire faced a period of significant upheaval and challenges. Uh, the transition of power from Marcus Aurelius to his son marked the end of the five good emperors. Good job. Ole, ole. It's like no dad or parent ever wants to go, oh, you're a disappointment. And then no kid wants to hear that either. Um, so you're not a disappointment. Says to me. five, it ended the period of the five good emperors period, characterized by relative stability and competent leadership. Uh, Commodus rule Commodus. Huh? Say that again. The son of communist ruled communist. The son of Marcus Aurelius proved to be ineffective and tyrannical leader. He lacked the virtues and philosophical wisdom of his, of his father, and instead of focusing on self indulgence and, and extravagance and cruelty, uh, his misrule led to a decline in the overall stability of the empire and weakened the authority of the central environment government that, that that's yeah extravagant lifestyle and you know yeah. political instability Gross. well yeah people didn't see him as a true leader then at that point as he dismissed competent officials and am i saying that right as he dismissed competent yeah. officials and replaced them with corrupt and inexperienced individuals loyal to him so basically, he was putting his cronies in there that stuck. It's just like, you know. That's when you don't, you're you like, you're hoping Marcus isn't going, good job, son. Because he totally just, you know. He totally botched it. Willy nilly. I can't even emphasize. It, it just basically goes on about how he really didn't. Well, let's not go into the big, big part of it then, because it's kind of just, it's probably not good for TV. I'm just saying. No, and it sucked. I think to draw, to, to kind of draw a little wrapper around that, you know, Marcus sought to do things, even though he was a leader, in, in a virtuous way. And his son was the exact opposite of that. And that the stream isn't really about that, but it's, it's just about the mental capacities and how they were different. And having, I think, if maybe if his son had more self-reflection, that one little step, maybe if his son wrote down his his internal turmoils, but he may have not had had maybe a hard life. Sometimes when you don't have a hard life, you you it's, it's hard to appreciate when you don't have certain things. A mental struggle, you don't have a, any way to mentally reflect or mentally grow. Yeah, you don't have a way to, I mean... No, there's no reason to grow. We say that a lot of times so. around our family. Yeah, and then if you... If you like, the only way you grow is through pain. Therefore, if you have no, like, way to, uh, no compass or... You have no moral compass, then, then you go out and you do certain things that you shouldn't be doing. And you're not living up to your capabilities. I think that's the virtue part that they also talked about being stoic is knowing that you have an obligation to do the best you can. You have an obligation to try to make other people's life better. You really do. And after all this mental philosophical five years of the rulers of the Roman Empire. The five, five good ones, yeah. And then it just turned into schlock. Well, you know. It's not cool, obviously, but you know, you just try to do what you can where you're at in your community. Start there. For sure. That's what I would do. I need to finish this little dude. You're distracting me. Okay, so. What else you want to talk about? Anything else? I think we covered almost everything, man. Nope. Oh, well, yeah. Nope. No, Dad, you're wrong. For instance, in book one, section. 16 he oh, writes oh i went over that didn't i you did yeah i went over oh no i didn't no not that part oh yeah so uh i looked up what did marcus write about 
okay. regarding. Yeah, in I meditations, did look this up. he reflects the internal struggle, struggles. We're gonna get into that like a, a bunch right now. Uh, he contemplates ethical dilemmas associated with the war and the necessity of making difficult decisions as a leader. So, you know, while he was thinking a bunch, his, his son was not thinking at all. For instance, in book one, section 16, he writes, From Maximus, I learned self-government, and not to be led aside by anything, and cheerfulness in all circumstances, as well as in an illness and just admixture in the moral character of sweetness and dignity and to do what is set before me without complaint here he acknowledges the influence of his mentor sextus of Chironia, known as maximus who guided him through practicing self-control and maintaining positive attitude even in challenging circumstances, such as during illness or times of war. You know, you know, you want to. Uh, well, specific packet, pa pa passages of the meditations do not directly address his personal conflicts regarding war. They, like, kind of reveal his influence and a philosophical approach. Sure. Yeah, I could see that not wanting to take uh, war, war to home at it's, night. He wasn't about being political. Even though he was a political figure, so maybe that's the greatest, greatest of all. I think that is. I think that's called balance. Yeah. We we talk about that, you know, quite a bit. Is having that balance and man, you know, it's a nice little. I think. Uh, I'm happy with what we did today. Well, he he found his balance. That's kind of that's that's his whole thing. Yeah, I like uh, it. He was the balance <laughs> until there was unbalance. And then there was New Balance. Sorry. Aren't those shoes or something? Do you have New Balance shoes? Ha. In other Sorry, I'm not making fun of your shoes. I passages. just thought that was funny. I keep saying packages. In other packages. passages, uh, Marcus reflects on the impermanence of life and the inevitability of death. Yeah. Inevitability of death which are common themes in Stoicism. These reflections likely helped him to cope. <laughs> why, why did you get so loud all of war And the constant pressures of ruling an empire. So, while specific we need, we need to need put a condenser on you? Okay. Anyways, it's important to note that meditations were not in, like intended for public consumption. Yeah. And it was just his private journal. I kind of, I, I was talking about that earlier when you were helping that customer. Or whatever you were doing. What were you doing? Did you see my face glitch? <laughs> I'm never going to finish this little silly thing. I'm trying the hardest right now. I skipped a step. I got to make these little arm things. I don't know if they can tell what I'm doing. They cannot. What did you learn? Did you learn anything cool today? I learned to accept what is, and it is what it is. It's a big uh, dokeism thing. It's it is what it is, and it is what it's that, and you can't beat that with the baseball bat. Something like that. Yeah. Better get sponsored. Right. What do you have a favorite part of what you learned? Um, I I just like talking about it. Yeah. Like, it's interesting in itself, and you know, I'm just enjoying learning about it as we go. I I can't. I'm not good at reflecting on things, and well, as a matter of fact, I'm not good at listening to things. So that's kind of why I, I j I'm just here. Well, the more, like, I, I just kind of. You know, I just. Something will stick out sometimes, you know, when you're. When yeah, it's doing really it, just, so. you know, everything overall. I just um, kind of shoved it in my brain somewhere. Oh, really? Marcus was a Roman Empire. Roman Empire? Beatles, just a man. 
Well, that's what I accidentally pronounced it. I know, I know. I was being silly. I heard you. Oh my gosh. Man, I mean, this I is mean, why you have the, an apron. The beginning Did y'all see that? Like, it flew through my my arms. This is an interesting topic. We went back and forth. We went all over. We were. Just... I'm not done with this. I'm going to finish this. Yeah, but I was. I'm listening. Now. Please continue. We're an hour in, and an hour is a long time. Is it been an hour? Oh yeah, it has been an hour. That's not bad. It's, it's we've done bad. we've done over two hours before. I think you got a truck done. I did, but I'm almost slick. I got two little things here. Sometimes I'm gonna... stoicism is like something. So... Bro, you're being silly, huh? Yeah. What you don't want to? I, I think I want to see this. How it ends up. Looking. You know what? You you do that. I'm going to. You can't stop me. You can try. This little picture is like really tiny. He's gonna mess with sound effects, y'all. So be behave. Can I? Do I no, I don't want to hear him right now. I we we need to work on some. But speaking of sound effects, if you had an alien voice that had its own language, what would it sound like? Yeah, would it be kind of animal crossing? No, yours. I want to hear yours. Like well. Animal Crossing, like a, how, like it, well, how, how does that sound? It's like it's kind of like that. Really? I'm, I don't do a good impression, but it's like that's how it sounds. I I don't disbelieve it's, you. I it's just... high pitched, kind of mumbly jumbly. Oh, okay. So you think that's how they, an alien should sound? Well, cartoonish alien. Okay. I don't see that. If you if and if you were in Say like you were an alien from another planet. What sort of special power would you have? Anybody? I would be able to take my thoughts out of my brain and throw them at people as a... That sounds kind of mean. Take my thoughts out of my brain. <laughs> Like a transformer? Put them into a ball. Sounds like you're, you bundle it up, throw it at somebody. Now they, you know. Okay. I'm getting close here. Keep talking. Taking my thoughts and turning them into physical objects and bundling them up into some nugget. Yeah, some nugget, a thought nugget, and basically using it as a weapon. That would be your superpower. Yeah. That's kind of funny. I don't know. I don't. I mean, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying it's kind of funny. I'm just like thought I right. I like it. It's kind of like, you know. I know. What were you doing? Were you making fun of me? You're not gonna drink that. No, I don't like uh, blue raspberry. Blue raspberry. It's the worst flavor. It smells the worst. Here, guys. <laughs> See? It's like stinky winky. Stinky winky? Yeah, it's like. It's like. Stinky winky. Bruh. Oh, man. I forgot to put a part in. Sounds like a hair problem. Yeah, it is. Now I have to get this back apart. Here. Some uh, action sequence. Can, can you just like give them some extra entertainment? Since you know, two two things to focus on, so they don't have to. I think this is fine. If they learn anything about the the stream, they have to accept what I'm doing. Oh well. Or not, or just not tune in at all. Just remember, Marcus. Remember me. Dang it. I will say this. You don't need any glue for this. It's all sort of keystone together. We had a lot of fun on this stream. This stream was kind of like... 
You want me to find more things to talk about? Because we totally could. Well, what do you want to talk about? Deep thoughts that aren't actually deep. deep. thoughts by a 14-year-old. No. Do you deep, have any quotes no. of the day you want to do? Sure. Like, what would you say? I'll, I'll, if I'll, somebody I'll tell you. I got it open. Yay. Uh, here's one. Uh, no, no, yeah, although they're terrible. Sorry, he tried to look up some quotes. He, he was gonna be quippy. They were some gross stuff. This is dumb. Here's one. Here's a deep thought. How can mirrors be real if your eyes aren't real? Here's a deep thought, how to be nonsensical. Here's one. I've got a soul, but I'm not a soldier. I've got ham, but I'm not a hamster. Okay. Oh, bro. I can't get this in. Oh, maybe I have it. Okay, here's one. Here's a quote. Have you ever stopped to watch a bluebird drop from a tree and take to the air? What? Me neither. Have you ever stopped to finish out a rhyme, but the rhyme, but the right words aren't there? Meet Cleaver. <laughs> you know, give them. You want to grade them? Maybe we can grade these, these quotes. Okay. Stupid is as stupid does. Really? Forest? Yeah, what, what do you write that one? Not original. Tomorrow is the first day of the rest of your life. Are these not not deep thoughts, I guess? Yeah, that's what that is. Or just re regurgitate it. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to grade stuff. It's that... deep thoughts that aren't actually deep. Well, they are, but you've heard them. Right. Stuff like be yourself. <laughs> right. I don't know if this will work. I may break it. How can my feet smell if they don't have a nose? Well, your feet stink. You and my nose don't cares. You get it, do you? No, I do. Let me pull back up the music because I accidentally closed out of it. Way to go, you disc jockey. Okay, here we go. Uh, I look, it's almost done. We're getting closer. I know it doesn't look like it. Just bear with me. Okay, I'll do actual deep thoughts. Then. How about that? Is that okay? I don't care. You think Bob Ross was a stoic? He had to have been. Or else how, how else was he so good at painting, I guess? I don't know. Excuse you. They couldn't have heard that with the noise suppression. I heard it. Deep thoughts. Heard it through the grapevine. Dun, 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 dun. You know, I, I think... I don't know if I'm doing something wrong here, but it sure is a pain in the butt. You have power over your mind, not outside events. I give that a 5 out of 10. Think about if you were around during Marcus... Uh, Aurelius's time, and he told you that. Yeah, but what I think the overarching point. No, I agree with you. It was, it's profound today, still. But you okay? I have hiccups. <laughs> but you got rid of them. No, they came um, back. Okay, so I think. Hey man, you're gonna <laughs> look. It's a little truck. You're in this picture. Um, I think if, I guess my point real quick on that is the, you know, like people, 
kind of don't know like he, there's a lot of these things he said right right well i don't think that people realize that like um you know he how much influence he actually has yeah it's because okay. like that you're like oh okay duh. well do you like i i made the point I, earlier when I, you I, were gone that you know how like sometimes on social media you'll see like a famous person with some quotes and yeah, half right. the time it's not even their quote they're just using their face and a lot of times it's quotes from him right it's based off of him or, or yeah it's influenced by him you know th here's here's a big one the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts again you're like okay yeah no duh but like no no don't no duh me like live it you know Waste no more time arguing about what good a good man should be. Uh, be one. Yeah. It, that it, was the end of it. Because yeah, I read that one it, as well. It cut off. Here's the um, rest of the second one I did. Uh, dwell on, on the beauty of the life. Watch the stars and see yourself running with them. Think constantly on the changes of the elements into each other. Of course, such thoughts wash away the dust of earthy life. See? It's a beautiful writer, man. Exactly. He's very cool. Writer. Everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is a perspective, not the truth. Yeah, you know, I... Okay, there... this, this is a really good one. What, okay. what do you have to say? No, I was going to say, there's like a debate sometimes on absolute truth. We can talk about that someday. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, here's like probably the best one in my, my eyes. Uh, if you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but your estimate of it. And this is... Uh, and this you have power over it to revoke at any moment. Yeah, kind of goes back to that bully thing, you know. Well, you have the power to, you know, forget it. <laughs> right. It's, okay, so I built great. two, what they kind of look like as helicopters. I don't know. <laughs> and then we have a truck. How right, does it right. intertwine? Let's find out. It's army. So, it looks like that this one kind of, right? Heck, I don't know. Oh, that's like different ways to build it. Oh, look. It's a different way to build it. And I didn't even realize it. That's why they give you this thing. Oh, that's crazy. Which is like a little tool to separate it. Okay, so... You want to show them on the instructions? Yeah, I'll, what I'll do is I'll show them. Alright, so this is what I built. And, you know, it's like basically like a three-piece ensemble. Right. It's All like right. this, this, and this. Yeah. See it? Yeah. You get the idea. Okay, and then on the instructions... you. Can you can build it like this and put it in the back of the pickup and stuff and then you see like the it's different that modes. final page right there yeah it's like now I, sorry i think i'm gonna save that for later because i built everything and that means we're done good button so what? we always tell everybody stay positive all right stay groovy stay and stay groovy cosmic, and stay po cosmic. Yeah. learn teach and repeat so you know I learned some more stuff today about this dude. I kind of knew about him. Um, he learned, hopefully, some stuff. Now we can just go and repeat it and teach it, and then you can do the same thing. We were learning, and then we were teaching. And now we're repeating. It's an endless cycle. So, so are we are going to do the frog build, Punky. Just get off my back. You, you want to... And then later, we'll... To our four, our four people that walk, our four people that watch us... Anyway, we'll hopefully see you tomorrow evening. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Sayonara. Yeah. Or goodbye. Or goodbye. <laughs>